Today I'm reinforcing the top shelter belt. So in terms of context, south is that way, directly behind the camera. So this is the southwest in that direction. So this is, we get an awful lot of wind from the southwest. We've had about a month, six weeks of, you know, just relentless southwest winds. So this is the very top outer skin of the shelter belt. Now, over the last several years, we've built up a double row of hazel. And, you know, they're happy, you know, they're quite healthy trees. And there's a row of them all the way along in both directions, right across the whole top end of the site. And there's a second row, you can see these here with the yellow caps, similarly right across. So we've got a double row of those. But growth has been fairly slow because we're right here at the top of the slope. They're very exposed. They get a lot of wind uh, and they're still relatively small plants. And of course, they're getting a certain amount of grass competition and so on. Uh, you know, shelter belt trees don't get, you know, huge amounts of mulch from us because it's a fairly limited resource and we tend to favour the more expensive, more productive species in terms of, you know, apple trees and so on. So uh, we want to reinforce this shelter belt. So what we've gone with is alder. Now this is common alder. We planted a load of Italian alder in 2018 and they went in at a similar sort of height to these and they're now up to about 15, 20 feet tall. You know, it's a big solid block of shelter belt. So directly in the row between the two rows of hazel, we planted the alder. I'll show you what we've got. So these are bare root alder trees. You can see there on the roots, there's tiny little nodules. And those are nitrogen nodules that are formed by a soil bacterium that produces a particular enzyme that fixes nitrogen. And it forms a symbiotic relationship with the alder and the alder uh, gives simple sugars to the soil microbes and the soil bacteria, this, this soil bacteria, uh, fixes nitrogen and shares it with the tree in return and of course once they're in the ground um, every autumn every leaf fall we have a massive injection of nitrogen rich leaves that are on the ground and growing and also because these are all so close together their um, uh, their fungal network their rhizomium network will all be intermingled they'll effectively fuse together under the ground even in places so they will be sharing nitrogen to quite a large degree now because of the lay of the land, the house is actually lower than this ridge. So as these trees come up, the hazel will only come up to maybe 20 feet or so. Not a problem. That's not going to cast a long enough shadow in winter when we've got the low winter sun behind the camera. That'll cast quite a long shadow, but the house will still be in sun. These, on the other hand, these will go 100 foot plus. Well, at the density that we've got them, we're going to be living in the shade forever if that happens. But it's not an issue. Like a lot of the species we've got here, they're designed to be coppiced. Now, coppicing is periodically cutting the tree off completely at the base. Um, you have a corresponding amount of biomass die back below the ground. So the roots die back and again, release all of that nitrogen that everything else then grows like you know, crazy, goes nuts. So, um, and the alder itself doesn't die, it regenerates loads of new shoots. Everything that we have on the site, from the animal systems to the heating to the cooking, all relies on uh, stick fuels, so we can't have too much coppice. So with something like hazel, they're generally done on a 5, 10, 15 year rotation. So you cut each one to the ground every 5 to 10 years. Uh, alder, similar probably. So before they get too big, they're cut down, they'll put on new biomass. But by the time all of these things, the hazel and the alder, are anything approaching, you know, even quarter of the way towards maturity, this is going to be a very, very dense uh, screen. And as anything gets too tall that it's going to start causing shade issues, we get to take it out. It resets the clock. So in the case of the, the hazel, for example, they live for centuries if you keep coppicing them, as opposed to 50, 60, 70 years, perhaps, um, if they just left to grow out and die. Uh, alder, similarly, you can keep trees alive virtually indefinitely they'll just keep you know going from strength to strength as long as you keep coppicing periodically so this will be a shelter belt predominantly but it'll also give us especially on the inside of it the away from the windward side will give us a certain amount of nut protection potentially it'll give us firewood it'll sequester carbon it'll deepen the topsoils it'll um, infiltrate a lot more water so we're more resilient to drought and also flood it's yeah an amazing system and it's just mostly a shelter belt um 
So it'll be interesting to see what these do. They're fairly small trees, but uh, there's a lot of them. So, you know, we're planting them fairly closely together and we know all that is very well on this site. It copes very well with grass competition because it produces its own nitrogen. So I'm going to complete this row all the way along as far as the toilet block, which actually isn't very far. And then I'm going to start, so that's the entire southwestern approach blocked off from high winds as they grow. It's a huge ad uh, addition to the shelter belt. And then I'll continue with another one from the toilet block down the southeastern edge. So the diamond, the props in the shape of a diamond pointing directly south. Both of those edges will be completely protected with a really nice skin of fast growing trees that will also produce a huge amount of nitrogen to grow everything else around it as well. Uh, we've got a lot of tree planting to do this winter, but uh, these are among the most important because they produce their own fertility. It's a massive, massive uh, help when it comes to getting systems up quickly.